Yo, what's up, people? Mark Price here at DevSlopes.com. And we have an exciting time ahead of us right now because what we're going to do is we're actually going to start implementing an API that works with Mongo and Mongoose. And this is where the real action happens. And this is where you are becoming a real uh, full stack developer. And uh, so good stuff here. Uh, crazy story. It's not crazy, but I was a mobile developer for a long time. And then I started learning the, the the web stuff, like the APIs and stuff, all on my own. And it was so hard. Like all this stuff here was so hard to figure out on your own. Things were scattered. Uh, and so what's really cool is I got to go through that whole process uh, over and over again. Now I've built a ton of APIs. And so I am teaching you everything I wish I had when I first got started here. The basics in the most easy form. Uh, what a lot of really smart developers like to do is teach the most complicated stuff right from the beginning. And they don't understand that we're like learning and we got to go through this here. So... Trust me when I tell you that uh, we're learning the core features here, and this imp this stuff is the most important stuff, and the stuff you'll be using over and over again, and it only gets more complex from here. So uh, we're we're making great progress. What we need to do is uh, get rid of those spaces there. What we need to do is create an API that can get a list of products as well as post a new product. We don't have anything unless we have a product, right? Okay. So let's let's try this out. First things first is remember here. Let's go over here to our Mongo shell. Show DBS. Okay. As you can see right now, there is no Swag Shop uh, database here. Okay. None at all. So we, that's because we haven't inserted anything into it. So what we want to do is create an a API endpoint that allows us to create a new product, and then we'll go back and look and see if it's actually in there which I think is awesome, uh, and it persists permanently. Okay, It's there even after our server is restarted or dies or has to get back up, and that's what it's all about. So what we're going to do is app.post, and we can post API, and it's going to be product, and then regular boilerplate stuff, right? So we're going to say request, response, and I'm just spelling these out all the way uh, just so you can remember what they are. Of course, it's usually rec and res, as what people put on there, which is fine. What we're going to do is we're going to create a new product. And we're keep in mind, this is an API. So the name of the product and the price is probably coming from the user or from the client. Okay, We wouldn't just enter random data here. We would get it from the client. So we're going to say var product equals new product. Okay, And the reason why we can say new product is because we imported it from here, which again comes from our product over here. So it gives us a model, and the mongoose model has the constructor syntax and allows, when you say new product, it allows uh, under the hood a new um, mongo slash mongoose JavaScript object to be created. I guess it's technically a mongoose JavaScript object. It never hits mongo until you actually call save on it. Okay, And then all we need to do is assign the values. So product.title, okay, where do you think it's going to come from? I want you to pause the video and I want you to write the code here that actually gets you the title from the client. What would you write? Unpause. Did you do it? Did you actually pause? You probably didn't, but that's okay. We'll go over it anyway. So product title equals request dot body dot title. The client's probably putting it in the body under the key title. And the other thing we can do is product dot price equals request.body.price. Now, for the likes, okay, how many people like this particular product? Um, since we're creating a new product, it's never been created before, the likes need to start out at zero. So product.likes equals zero. Okay. This is really cool, right? Now, we could have done this another way. Okay. This is the, um, this, this is completely valid, but we also could have done, assuming that Assuming that we've designed our API so that the client passes up the correct data, what we could have done is actually just said this, request.body, assuming that it has all the data we need, and it would actually create it. It would put that in there. Then we wouldn't have to do this or this. We might still have to set likes to zero. Um, but you know what? Actually, this is I have a better design. Rather than likes being zero, what we should do is in our product, we should say this. We should say type is of type number and default zero. Ooh, I like that a lot better. Okay. That makes it much better. So let's go back to our server. Uh, yep. Okay. So we could have said request.body. 
and then it would just put the stuff in here automatically. I wrote it out so you could see what's actually happening. Uh, you can also manually specify uh, here as well. So we could have said uh, the uh, the title is equal to request dot body dot title, and the price is equal to request dot body dot price. We could have done it manually that way too, um, but I'm going to do it the way we originally had it, just so it's it's all spelled out there. But you've seen a couple different ways to do it. Now all that we have to do is actually call save for it to go straight into our Mongo database. The connection's been made. Remember, this is important. When the app first loads, it goes and tries to make a connection to our local server, which should be running. If you're not running MongoD, this will fail, okay? And so what we wanna do is just save it. So product.save, the first parameter is a function, all right? And inside of that first function, the first parameter is error or the newly saved product. So what it's going to do is it's going to save it and then it's going to give us back, if it was successful, it's going to give us back the object that the, the Mongo slash Mongo object that was just saved with its object ID and everything, which is really cool. So we'll call this saved product. Okay. Like so. And then we can say if there was an error. Okay. If there was an error, we'll say response.status 500.send. And we're going to say error. We'll say could not save product. Now, this is kind of a generic error. You gotta send something back. I mean, there's gotta be a reason why we have an error. And it's probably our fault of some kind. So we shouldn't really see this, maybe except in development stages or the or maybe the server was down or something, but you know, we want to send something meaningful back. This is the best we can probably do right now, because we don't we don't know why it would fail. Um, but you could always send back something more specific if you discover what it could be. Um, but you have to send back something if there's an error. Okay, so what we want to do is else, otherwise it successfully saved it to the database, we'll say response.status 200.send, and we're going to say saved product, okay? So we're going to send back to the user the newly saved product. And this is very typical in REST API design, that you send back the new database object that was returned. And, and the reason why is if I'm on a mobile app or a web app, okay, and I create, let's say, a new product, it goes to the server, well, I need that ID. I need that newly created ID so I can save it locally and have the proper ID when I'm working with that. Otherwise, uh, if I didn't send it back, then I would need to refresh the entire list in the app. So I create a new product. If it's successful, then I need to, to refresh the whole list. But this is easier. Just send back the newly created project product with the new ID, and then you can just replace that temporary one that was just created, created in the client uh, that was sent up. Uh, it's a much better approach. Uh, and of course, we're explicitly saying res.status on this 200. We don't have to do that. Uh, if we take off the status and just say dot send, it's the exact same thing. It's going to give us a 200 status, uh, and which is fine. Um, another thing you'll probably see sometimes is response.json, which is going to send back JSON. Uh, and that's completely fine. You can go ahead and do that if you want. Um, but res.send does the same thing and, and does other things as well, too. And so this is shorthand here. And I think this is good for now. We don't need to put the 200 on every one. So we've sent a saved product. We send it back to the client. Okay, let's look at our terminal. Make sure nothing's crashed. Okay, nothing's crashed. So the next thing to do is actually test this out. Pretty cool. So let's go to our handy dandy Postman or whatever tool you use for your web requests. But Postman is free. Create a new tab here. And first things first is we're going to do a post request. Yep, post. Remember, the post here needs to be the same as the post here. And what we're going to do is HTTP local host on port 3000. Okay, and we've got to have the right URL, right? So slash product. And what did it require? It required a title and a price. So we go to the body. Raw text is JSON application. All right, and the title. So we're going to say vault boy bobblehead all right i'm getting a rare collector's item here and uh, the price is going to be say 23.99 it's not overly cheap so if i send this what should happen is it should hit the api okay and then the api with mongoose should hit the mongo database insert a new collection it it gets an, and it gets that record back from the database with the new object ID and then sends it back through the API to the client, which in this case, our client is Postman. Pretend that Postman is our web app, our front end web app, or our iPhone app or Android app. So let's go ahead and send it. And sure enough, it was successful. See so a 200, okay? And 
look at this, it now has a new ID and there's the title. Now here's the magic. Let's go back to our terminal and let's go look at that Mongo database again. Mongo, show DBS, and sure enough, Swag Shop is there now. So the very first insertion created the database and the collection. So if I say use Swag Shop and then show collections, there's now one collection in there called products. And remember, just like I told you many, many times before, what you put here is really important, okay, with a capital P. And what's going to happen is in Mongo, when you do a, sh a shell search, uh, it's going to lowercase it and add an S. It's going to pluralize it like it just did right here. Okay, so now we can say db.products.find. Let's find all the products. And there's one now with the ID and the price. So this came all the way over from Postman, our client, over to our API, and then from our API to our database. So congratulations. You can now pat yourself on the back that you have fully you have uh, done a full stack operation all the way from the client to the API to MongoDB back through the API back to the client. That is pretty dang awesome and you just did that and you can officially say that now. So uh, really cool. One important thing is when you're in the Mongo shell, don't ever, 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 ever leave it open like this. Always click, always type an exit. What can happen is it can hang and then corrupt your data and uh, I've seen it happen before. It's happened to me before. So always, always, always exit out of the shell. A very, very important. Cool. Some really good stuff here. So what we've done so far is we've just created the ability to add a new product and we've tested it out. So let's call this video done. We've got a lot more to do. And I think this is a great stopping point. Make sure you catch up here and you understand everything. If you don't understand everything that we're doing, stop. Don't watch any more videos. Stop. Read every line of code. This is a tip for new programmers. And they, and they, they struggle with this so bad. So many people, and myself included, are speed readers. We, we read major bullet points, and then we process the information uh, from a global perspective. But with coding, you can no longer do that. From now on, as a programmer, everything you write is important. Everything you read is important. Every single line. Don't just process stuff at a global level like when you're speed reading, okay? Every single line is important. You need to understand what is app.use? What does dot use mean? Body parser.json. What does this do? What does URL and code do? Go to the Goog go to Google. Go to the Google and uh, search for these very specific things. This is how you become a better programmer. Don't just take my word for it, okay? Every single thing you see in here, go look it up and read about it. That's how you become a better programmer and you will progress far faster than anyone else who's just watching videos and copying and pasting. Okay, enough soapbox for me right now. Let's move on and forward. Mark Price at devslopes.com.